Okay, I think we're going to officially get started. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. My name is Stephanie Allen, and I am the Assistant Director within the Division of Professional Studies. I want to welcome each of you to the UMBC Data Science Virtual Open House. We wish to remind everyone that we will hold the special raffle for the Open House Scholarship Bonus at the conclusion of the PowerPoint presentation and before we hold our Q&A period. You must still be present during the live drawing in order to be eligible to win. We hope that you enjoy the presentation. And without further ado, I introduce you to the Graduate Program Director, Dr. Ergen Simsek. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to UMBC. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. So I'm just checking the who's here, who is not. I can see that Dr. Solish is here. Okay, very good. So let me share my uh, yeah PowerPoint screen. Let's start with that one. Hopefully you can see it. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, again, welcome. At least online. Uh, right now, uh, I am in this building, IT building, and it's a beautiful day today. Um, and hopefully in spring 2023, 20, uh, you will be here with us. Uh, so my email address is simsec at umbc.edu and um, I will be the advisor of half of you, okay? And the other half, actually, uh, Dr. Sorush will be your advisor and you know, it is just based on the, it will be just based on the last names. Um, and Ms. Ellen can help you with your application package if you have any questions. So you can reach to her at data science-mps at umbc.edu. Also, we have two websites. So one of them is like official website where you can find this like static data about our program, like datascience.umbc.edu. But we also have a dynamic website, which is dil.umbc.edu. So like, all the information you need about our courses, syllabus, instructors, pathways, everything you want to know about our program, actually, uh, it is here at dil.umbc.edu. So dil uh, stands for um, Data Impact Lab. Originally, originally, it was a research lab, but then we changed it to an information hub. And there are different sections for you know, current students, prospective students, domestic students, international students. Please, 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 uh, if you're interested in joining us, please bookmark it and start reading uh, relevant pages from today. All right, so let's start. Um, the, the first thing, like since you are here, you already know uh, probably what it is, but let's start with the formal definition of data science, why it is very popular right now, right? Uh, so if you ask this question to different people uh, from different industries uh, doing something related to data science, I'm sure they will all have different answers, but basically we are trying to gather new information or hidden information from um, uh, large and complex data sets by using mathematics, statistics, programming, and other stuff. So this is, uh, you know, actually a majority of our business, but, so, but by the way, that definition is given, uh, made by uh, National Academy of Sciences and Engineering, right? Uh, but it, that definition doesn't actually include uh, AI completely. So to me, it's a little bit incomplete, but that's fine. But like AI, like artificial intelligence is also part of our business. And if you like, like why we why it is right now so hot? Actually, it has been very hot in, in the past, you know, five to six years, or maybe even eight years, both in academia and in industry. And there are basically like four reasons. So, reason number one is, of course, the amount of we are generating, the amount of data we are generating is just increasing, right? All those tablets, smartphones, um, like new devices, like um, like tags. So, the information is just increasing and increasing and increasing, right? Um, so while the, the amount of information is increasing, the, the price of storing that data is just getting cheaper and cheaper. Like on the right, for example, you see that big giant capacitor. Actually, it is the, um, uh, it's, it's a hard drive made by IBM in late 1950s. And they were selling this device for $50,000 and it could only hold five megabytes of data, right? So if you go to Amazon right now, you can buy a one terabyte of, you know, uh, a, a USB stick, which can hold one terabyte of data. Uh, it is like sixty dollars, fifty dollars. If, if you can buy it on um, during the um, uh, Black Friday, like ten dollars, right? It's extremely cheap. So storage data is getting just cheaper and cheaper. 
Third reason is th these actual bad boys, uh, like GPUs and TPUs, like graphics processing units. So we have these bad boys specifically designed for us, right? So these guys are um, designed to, ma to, to make uh, matrix operations extremely fast, extremely efficient. And like 90% of the time, like our uh, operations in data science, in especially machine learning part, it is all matrix operations, right? So this is why um, GPUs and TPUs are so important. And series like uh, when you uh, join us, when you do the, uh, you know, build machine learning system, you will realize that that will be a huge difference comp like between running your codes on a regular CPU and running your codes on a GPU, okay? Sometimes one order of magnitude, sometimes two orders of magnitude improvement uh, you will experience. And the fourth component, and I think it is maybe the most important one, fourth reason why data science is very hot right now is, the field of data science is extremely welcoming extremely welcoming so you don't have to have a background in computer science you don't have to have a, you know specific background in data science as long as you have a genuine interest in data science then the, the data scientists will welcome you so in our program and also in the industry that you know, I, I met so many people from extremely diverse backgrounds so in our program we have people from more than 30 different backgrounds like so we have of course uh, like computer scientists in, uh, um, students with an uh, engineering degree in, degree in electrical or like me mechanical or civil <coughs> but we also have people from um, music history <coughs> excuse me uh, journalism uh, like from like history, like, like like anything you can think of, like we have people from those different fields. Um, and the, another thing is like again related to this 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 aspect is like like for example in my original background, like you know only original field which is like electromagnetics, we you know we used to write our codes and we were keeping those codes for ourselves on our computers. We were not sharing with them. But data scientists are like not 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 like that. So. Everyone is sharing their contributions through their GitHub repositories or some other places, but it's a very open area. Everything is almost free, right? Python is free, Anaconda is free, uh, Jupyter Notebooks are free, um, GitHub is free as long as uh, you're not going to upload large files. So everything is free. And those algorithms, like you know, all, all those Python modules, right? they're all free. So this is why like becoming a data scientist, um, it doesn't require Actually, yeah, that's also the other side. That if you have a simple Google, uh, like Chromebook, even that is good enough to start your uh, academic career or uh, career in data science. You can use Google Colab to build your uh, initial machine learning systems. So let's uh, st do, 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 let's change the order a bit uh, in the reverse direction. The job market has been really great, uh, especially for data science since I joined this program, which was like almost five years ago. So uh, right now, the average salary is around like 100K for the people with a master's degree. Um, and if you look at the numbers, like you know, there are you know, tens of thousands of jobs um, uh, you know, in the field of data science. But of course, not all the, you know, all these jobs have the same title. Like they are not data scientists. Some of them are like data engineer. Some of them are called like machine learning engineer. Uh, there are like a bunch of them. Um, so we are extremely proud, uh, like because 96% of our graduates, so by the way, this number represents the entire uh, school, right? 96% of our graduates, you know, find jobs right after, or maybe before even graduation. So that's really beautiful. And here you see all those companies. Uh, so the, the, you know, this is actually a brand new list. Uh, all those companies are, uh, graduates are you know, employed by. Um, and there's this very interesting data so this was a survey uh, conducted among like 6,000 people, fixed 6,000 data scientists, and they ask um, how often do you get contacted for new job opportunities, like through LinkedIn or other, uh, or other mechanisms. And 50% of the people, like data scientists, they say they receive at least one inquiry per week. And actually, this will happen to you, okay? This will also happen to you. And this is actually also happening to our current students, our current faculty members, and unfortunately, like one of them uh, recently left us because he got a really, really very nice job offer that we cannot match from financial point of view. Okay, let's continue. Look, like it, uh, as I told you, that the the interest on data science is huge. Uh, there are so many people. You know, there are so many companies that are trying to uh, 
you know, higher data scientists have you saw this interest and we created the, these programs graduate programs what what are those a graduate certificate in data science and master of professional studies in data science so i will talk about those programs in, in a bit but don't forget that you offer these programs at two different campuses so right now i'm at the main campus which is very close to baltimore or bwi if you are familiar with the area and we also have a satellite campus uh, which is an hour or drive like it's, it's like an hour driving from here on the west it is more closer to washington dc and it is called like uh, the place is called uh, shady grove so um so we also run the same program at the uh, at, at our shady grove campus so if you join us either to our main campus program or shady grove program you can take courses from either either uh, places okay? it doesn't matter because we have some people like they, they live somewhere in the middle. Sometimes they take courses from the Rack, our Rackwell campus. Sometimes they take our courses, some courses from our main campus. But also, excuse me, uh, we also offer so many, so many online sections because especially our currently working uh, students. Uh, thank you. Uh, I was saying like we also have so many online courses because our students, um, they travel a lot. Uh, uh, so like it's, it's like uh, when you join us, if you join us, we will talk about them later during the orientation. Okay, let's talk about our graduate certificate. It is very easy. There are like four courses you are expected to uh, supposed to take. So data six hundred one to data six hundred four. So in the first one, data six hundred one, we provide a really nice introduction to the field of data science by uh, by going through basics of Python programming, uh, a, a quick review of like. Fundamental statistics, just you know, three weeks or so. Uh, basic linear algebra, then we make a small introduction to machine learning by studying linear regression and logistic regression. So this will be a good introduction to, to the field of data science, but you will be doing real data science actually in 602, which is our machine learning class. 604 is our data management class. So you will be working with, you know, uh, study, I like studying SQL, NoSQL, uh, structured data, unstructured data, all you know, sorts of, sort of things. Uh, and in 603, which is our big data class, we will teach you how to scale up, okay? Uh, like because in other courses, like you can basically use your own laptop, uh, your data sets will be small and clean most of the time. But in 603, you will be dealing with extremely large data sets, and you will learn how to uh, run those codes uh, either on the cloud or on, uh, like, uh, cluster servers. Excuse me. Um, so, again, like, very easy. So these four courses will definitely provide you a very nice uh, fundamental uh, background so that you can start your um, data science career right away. And actually, I have to be honest with you. Uh, I've seen so many examples of students. Like, uh, they join us. They take you know, two or three courses in their first semester. They start applying for jobs, and they got, they get hired. And uh, like, even before completing your data science certificate or master's program, uh, our our courses really help our students by getting finding jobs in the field of data science. So that's easy. So let's talk about our master program, master of professional studies. Uh, so this is not a master of science. So this is a master of professional studies, and there is a very important difference between them. So on the right, like you see like a chart. Um, so. Actually, yeah, it's not a chart, it's like a box, but it, it was supposed to be a chart. So X axis here is theory and the Y axis is application, right? And if you look at the MS program, uh, you will see that their program is really great to, for teaching their students uh, the, the theory behind machine learning algorithms, okay? So if you want to work for Google or Facebook, and if you, if you are interested in developing new algorithms, then you should do MS in CS, okay? We don't develop new algorithms, we just use to existing current algorithms. So we are a very, very applied program. Okay, Master of Professional Studies is a very, very applied program. So our focus is the tools and the applications of data science. So right now you don't have to be a Python guru, but I we guarantee you, so if you spend two years here, or like if, if you get your master's here, if you study really hard, when you graduate, you will be very comfortable with, with Python programming. You will be very comfortable with, with using all those different types of machine learning techniques, working with different types of data sets. Okay, so we have all those courses ready for you. And actually, we even have more like advanced stuff. Like you can also take courses on deep learning, NLP, AI. We also have those courses. But again, like we are looking 
at data science from the uh, application point of view. Okay. So most of our courses are taught by adjunct professors. So we have four time we have four full time faculty members. Um, but of course, four full time faculty members we can only teach you know, ten or fifteen of them of, of our classes. But we offer you no. Know, this semester, for example, we offer 60 different sections of data science courses. Since the number is really high, uh, we have lots of uh, adjunct professors uh, teaching in our program. And these are the people who are like, who work as like a data scientist or data engineer at really nice companies like NVIDIA, Databricks, Amazon, IBM. So they have a full-time job in during daytime and then in the in the afternoon they or in the evening, I should say, early evening, they come our, our campus or they teach online um at either at our main campus or Shadika campus or online. Um in our program we don't have a thesis, so you don't have to write a thesis. So if you are interested in doing research, that's fine. We can we can help you with that. Uh and there will be a capstone project at the very end. Uh you will be working in a team of data scientists. Uh you will be trying to you will try to solve a real world uh data science problem, but you don't have to write like a like formal Pieces like, like like they do in the CS program or yeah, the MS program. Um, on the bottom left, actually, there is a very important um, Excel chart, to, at least for me, and that one says it's a little complicated to understand, but it says like the blue one in the middle. Current data scientists, fifty percent of them, they have a master's degree in data science, and forty-two percent of them they have a PhD. Um, so, of course, those people with PhDs, they mostly do um, machine learning algorithm development, right? Or like, like also computer vision development, AI development, so, you know, that's a different business. But most of the people who are uh, getting the data, cleaning that data, working on that data sets, like checking out the schemes, et cetera, then building machine learning models. Um, so those, most of those, those people have master's degrees. And actually, that's the reason why you should have a master's degree in data science. And you know, this is not only true for our for our program, whatever the program you are going to choose, that's also true. But you have to be careful. There are some master programs. Um, they are super light. They teach very little. They ask very little. And since they 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 cover so so few, all the students you know get A's and you know they they just graduate on time. But at the end, they know very little. Okay. So our program is not like that. Our program is technically rich program. Um, there are 10 courses. If you want, eight of them could be highly technical. Um, and this is why actually we are extremely successful. Uh, actually, our students are so successful in terms of finding very nice jobs at very nice locations. So uh, in, in the certificate program, like you take four courses. In the master's pro program, you are supposed to take at least 10 courses. Okay, and seven of these courses are fixed. So 601 to 604, we just covered, right? So we teach data ethics. Uh, we also have another course on like management, like uh, leadership and communication. And these courses will really help you. Actually, like ethics in the uh, like data ethics is a huge, huge, huge um, uh, subject right now. And all those big companies like Amazon, uh, especially, before you start working as a data scientist, they put you in a training for like, you know, three weeks just to make sure that you you understand the ethical aspects of this this business. So this is a very, very important class. And like you will be covering all the different uh, issues we deal with in in, you know, uh, in in data science from like bias in data sets to uh, like, uh, like the new, new rules regarding this uh, AI uh, algorithm. So like it's a long story, but like in the short version is European Union, they came up with this new rule saying that if you are going to create an AI algorithm, uh, then you will be responsible for the outcomes. So this is why some companies, uh, especially companies working on like face, facial recognition, they all stop those research projects because they don't want to be uh, dealing with those legal cases later on. Okay, so, so I'm sorry for talking some other, other stuff, but so then we also have elective courses. So elective courses, you can choose from many different fields like cybersecurity, health IT, uh, project management, engineering management. If you have a background in computer science, you can take a co uh, courses from the CS department. If you have a background in, uh, I mean, an undergraduate degree in economics, you can take courses from the economics department. Uh, and again, like you know, we have all those different programs, programs with with, with different 
uh, departments and also institutes. For example, we have one program with uh, NIH, like National Institute of Health. If you're interested in uh, like bioinformatics, you can take courses from them. And right, right now, as you can guess, right after the uh, COVID pandemic, uh, it's, it became a very, very hot subject as well. So again, like when you, if you join us, uh, we will talk about those uh, pathways, the courses in more detail. But the, the, here, the, the big message is we have a huge pool of courses uh, to help you with like, like preparing you for the job that job you are dreaming, dreaming about. Okay, so that's the most important part. Oh, we also have like different level of data science courses. So we call them like foundational, we call them applied, we call them advanced, but again, you know, these are right now too uh, much details for the uh, open house. Um, so some of our pathways, they like you can get a certificate. So one of them is like a cybersecurity pathway. So if you take these three courses, then you will be able to get eligible to, to get your certificate in cybersecurity. And if you take these three courses, like ENMG, 652, 621, and 63, then you will be able to get your uh, certificate uh, in project management. And they also really help. Like you, so, so what happens is you go to a company during the interview and you tell them, hey, look, I have a master's degree in data science from uh, UMBC. Oh, but by the way, I also took these three courses and I have a certificate in cybersecurity. And right now there are so many companies, especially in this neighborhood, in, like, in the greater DC, Maryland, Virginia area, they are doing cybersecurity slash data science. But I have to tell you, most of those jobs, they require citizenship. So if you're not a US citizen, uh, maybe cybersecurity is not the field you should take courses on. But there are, of course, some uh, companies, so they don't work for NSA, national security business, but they, they do, they have their own cybersecurity teams for their own uh, software platforms like for example, for example Amazon has their own cybersecurity group so you can find a job at Amazon through your cybersecurity cyber pathway by the way I apologize so today I got, my Mondays and Wednesday are the most busiest days so I've been in meetings since 9 30 a.m so and it is 6 30 p.m almost I'm losing my voice okay so let's talk about our faculty <laughs> So like till last, at, at, till the end of August, I was the only one. Okay, uh, but thank to uh, our department and also our like new colleagues. Now we have four full time faculty members. Uh, Doctor uh, Sorush, he just joined us. Uh, he has a very uh, extremely well uh, resume. He has a PhD from Stanford. So I have a PhD from Duke. Okay, so Duke is not as prestigious as as Stanford. So I accept that, but still, you know. Uh, I have. I also have a good degree. Um, and we have Dr. Borle. Uh, he he is doing uh, quantum computing slash data science slash some security cybersecurity stuff. Uh, so we are the three um, musketeers at the main campus. But we also have uh, a new person like Dr. Yusuf who joined us again recently. He is our main lead at our Shady Grove program. So he will be the advisor of our Shady Grove uh, students. Uh, and also he will be uh, trying to, you know, uh, grow our program uh, in Shady Grove. Um, yeah, so these are full-time faculty members. So Dr. Sorush, he's teaching 602, and he's a machine learning person. Dr. Borle, he's teaching 601. Um, so I was teaching, you know, 601, 602, and 606 before, but uh, starting from this semester, I will be teaching courses in the computer engineering department and uh, electrical engineering department. And we have adjunct faculty members, and this is the only some of them, not all of them. Okay, that's some of them. We have so many great people with great, great experiences, and they are really passionate about teaching. Um, right now, like uh, you know, I don't have time to go over all of them, but again, uh, when you meet them, you will see that how much experience they have and how much they enjoy uh, teaching. So they work at real nice companies like you know Google, Mitre, AT and T, KPMG, Nvidia, Amazon, IBM. Like you call it. Um, so some of them are here just because they love teaching, okay? But some of them are here to recruit. Uh, maybe Dr. Uh, Charles Givre, right? Because he has his own company. Or Don Gua Kim, he works for Databricks, right? They are one of the biggest, largest data science company. Uh, Dr. Yusuf, he works for IBM. So hint, hint, okay? Um, 
And like in the beginning, you saw a video of the, our recent graduates. Actually, I, I created that video last May. Uh, I was just curious, like what what they are doing. I just did a Google search. I found their LinkedIn accounts, and I I, I copy paste those images. So the, these pictures are from uh, that presentation. Uh, the only new one here is actually Sandeep, and Sandeep called me this Wednesday. So Wednesday mornings, I have my office hours. He just called me and he said, "Oh, by the way, now I'm a data scientist at CNN." Like what? And he, you know, he 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 was very dedicated to this field, and he really worked so hard. And now you know he has this extremely cool job, extremely cool job, right? And I'm very happy to receive like emails like this. For example, like Rohit, uh, this was early April, and he was like, "Hey, I have uh, full time offers from Amazon and Goldman Sachs." Okay. After this one, he also got a job offer from Walmart, Walmart Lab. Okay. The Walmart Lab is in like Northern Virginia. They have a huge data science team. And he's like, oh, I don't know which one to choose. Like, like that's his problem. Uh, another one, Shravan, uh, he was also uh, hired by Amazon. Actually, Amazon is hiring lots of lots of our graduates. Uh, there are particular reasons behind that. So, so what happened is like they promised uh, before they get there this H quarter headquarter two uh, from the state of Virginia. So they promised to hire five thousand people every year for the following five years. And they, those people have to be local, right? When, when, when we say local, they can hire from Virginia, mostly uh, Maryland and DC. And in all these three states, you don't have 5,000 uh, you know, graduates. So our like most of our recent graduates, they are uh, mostly hired by Amazon and they are doing really well. And we are very, very proud of them, okay? So we have a blog like gridinaction.umbc.edu. You can go to that blog and you can read the stories of our students. So basically the story on the right, uh, Jessica. So Jessica was studying psychology and she realized that there is a brand, a bright future combining psychology with um, data science. So she joined us, she did a wonderful job. Then right now she's a senior data scientist at Nielsen. Uh, the, the story at the bottom, uh, Nick, <laughs> He's a very smart guy. Uh, so after taking just two courses, he went to his boss and he asked, "Hey, look!" I'm, I'm, he asked his manager, "Like, like I'm going to be a data scientist," and he got a 56% salary increase. Very smart, smart move. Okay, a couple of uh, FAQs. Um, these are very common questions that we received. The first one is actually, "Is your program STEM?" So, yes, our program is STEM. What does this mean that if you graduate from our program and if you're an international student, you will be able to extend your uh, OPT. So you will be able to work for three years. And hopefully during that, those three years, you know, the company you are working for, they will apply for H1. So you will get your H1B. Um, I, can I take courses from both campuses? Yes, you can take courses from both campuses. Uh, are there some online classes? Yes, we have some online classes. Right now, there's huge demand. which started with pandemic and we have so many online courses. And do you help with finding internships? Uh, the answer is yes or no. So the answer is yes, because um, when we receive requests from nearby companies, we share those requests with our students right away. We have this email listserv, that's number one. Number two, we keep a good record of the uh, companies that are which, which hired our students as interns, and we share that information with our students through our website like dil.umbc.edu but you have to have a umbc email account to get access to that file um and also we have a, a, this great great careers uh service uh they organize so many events like one of them is actually next week september 21 they invite all those big companies to here and they, they uh, help our students to meet those uh large uh, like, uh, people from those large companies but they also invite people from those companies on a weekly basis i believe like uh, next week we will we will have um, I forgot their name. Uh, so they just check the data website, okay, careers.umbc.edu, uh, but they are extremely aggressive, like very uh, helpful, and they also help with mock interviews, making your resume better, uh, writing much, uh, writing cover letters that very effectively, etc., etc. Okay. Uh, is GRE required? No, we don't re require GRE, but if you have an impressive GRE score, why don't you send it to us, right? 
if it is very nice, if it's very high, then maybe if there's a problem with your GPA, we can say, oh, okay, this kid is smart. Just look at his GRE, right? So it, it, it can help you. But if it is a bad one, then don't send it, okay? Uh, we already answered this question. There's no thesis requirement. And uh, in terms of like regular assistantships, scholarships, we don't have, we don't have anything. Okay, we don't have TAs, we don't have RAs. We have some small jobs, but they are only available for senior students, okay? Not for the beginner students. Again, we will talk about them uh, in our orientation, but if you are curious about them, you can go to our website, dil.umbc.edu, and you can find the information under uh, Advising Center. Okay, uh, another very common question. What if I don't have a coursework or experience on subject X? Then there are a bunch of options. Option number one, you can take online courses, right? Like Coursera, edX, or something, something. So take an online class and make sure that you know that. Like you know Python programming, the basics, or you know uh, fundamental of statistics or algebra. Option number two, um, we also have our foundational courses on uh, programming, statistics, and math, like, like linear algebra. So that's also an option, but um, like for example, math class, we don't teach that class every every semester. We only teach it teach that class in the spring semesters. Okay, so if you if you are planning to like join us in spring, and if you want to start with like six oh one right away, then probably you should take a class online class right now. Um, you can take also courses uh, on like, nearby universities or community colleges. Um, that's also fine with us. But like our problem is like another problem. But what we want is we want you to be ready to become a successful data scientist. Okay, and like uh, yeah, like in like if, if you if if you don't meet our admission requirements, please explain in your statement of purpose what is your current action or your current plan to 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 meet our admission requirements. Okay. All right. Let me pause here and give stage to uh, Stephanie. Stephanie? Yes, thank you very much. So in talking about our admission and application requirements, excuse me, to be applicable, all applicants must hold a bachelor's degree in any subject matter with a minimum GPA of 3.0 on the 4.0 scale. If your previous institution has a different scale, we do have graduate school administration to accurately convert for committee review. As Dr. Simpson covered briefly, all prior coursework should include calculus, statistics, and basic programming, such as Python, which is the main language of our program. If you have work experience that would demonstrate abilities in programming, this may be a factor of consideration towards requirements. However, if you do not have prior coursework or work experience, we recommend you take online courses again in statistics, linear algebra, and or programming. While the GRE is not a requirement, international applicants must demonstrate proficiency in the English language by submitting one of the tests as you see shared via screen. Please ensure to know that all score reports must be less than two years old. In regards to the actual application process, you apply online, which all applications are manned by our trusted partner, CollegeNet. You can find the application link on screen, or you can find it on our data science website under the how to apply section. As part of the application packet, You'll need to request all official transcripts sent to the UMBC Graduate School. This can be done via hard copy US mail or via their email address, gradschool at umbc.edu. For those of you who are current UMB students and or alumni, you must still request or personally upload your UMBC transcript and submit it within your application. For our international applicants, again, you must provide one of the English proficiency test reports, as well as we require you to submit two letters of recommendation, which must be on letterhead and signed 
by the recommender. An academic resume. This is where you, you also can access, excuse me, this file and upload it yourself. And many times we do receive the question regarding what's best to include on this. We're looking for information such as your GPA, awards received, research experience, and any programming and coursework background that would be relevant towards program skills learned. And next, as you see on screen here, statement of purpose. This is your goal statement, and it's really where we get to know you, your background, and your academic intent in data science, as well as your future career plans. It's also where you can briefly share any concerns of perhaps a lower GPA or test report. We're now ready to do our raffle. And so I've got our trusty UMBC cup. And for all of you that RSVP'd, as well as those that logged in tonight, as Dr. Simsik was presenting, I was taking, um, I was putting down people and adding people and all of that. So everyone is in this cup. So I'm now going to draw your name. Per Even me? I, not you, Dr. Simsik. I'm very sorry. <laughs> But per the registration site, and then as well as in my opening remarks, you do have to note that you must be here in person during right now this live session to be applicable and eligible for this. So even if you RSVP'd, if I call your name and you're not here, unfortunately, I'll have to take you out your cup and go right back in and pull somebody else. So this is the great, great time. I wish I would have downloaded a drum, drum roll, but let's see. And I am going to ask, because we have quite a bit of number of attendees, which is always great, I'm going to ask that after I call your name, if you are present, I can't see on the screen, but I'd have to scroll through and I want to make sure to give my attention. If you are here, I need for you to unmute and say, I am present. So let's see. I am present. <laughs> Dinner, it must be present. Okay, wait until I call the name. <laughs> Jaiwan Choi. Is Jaiwan Choi here? Oh, that person was here. Congratulations. Oh, awesome. So glad that you're here. Thank you. Please note that I, as OPP Assistant Director, will be in direct communication with you within the next business day. I'll give you all of the updates of how you'll be eligible to receive the scholarship bonus. And so a round of applause for Jaiwan Choi. Awesome, congratulations. All right, I will turn it back to Dr. Simsek for closing um, closing remarks of the presentation, and then we will open it up for Q&A. Okay, yeah, actually this was uh, you know, very smooth. So like, thank, first of all, thanks so much uh, for your interest in our program. Um, so here again, like, I, I want to emphasize that we have two websites, one official, one uh, unofficial. Uh, if you are serious about you know, joining us, please bookmark both of them. Uh, this is the email address, um, like our common email address. Uh, your questions re related to um, you know, administrative subjects can be answered. And my email address is again simsek, S I M S E K, at umbc.edu. And we have this uh, code, like waiver code, right? DPS 2023. So if you are going to submit your application in the following days, please use co this code in the special population section, then you will not need to pay $50 for your application. And if you have questions now, we are ready to answer your questions. Please, please don't be shy about, like, you can ask all those sorts of questions about our program, our faculty, or your case. So we are ready for, to answer your questions. Hi, I had a couple questions about the phase program for bioinformatics. Um, is that program, I saw it was, is it online for that, for those courses or is it actually on the NIH campus? Actually on NIH campus. So that they have certain courses online, but most of their bioinformatics courses are on the campus. So you have to go to the campus, but there are also some online courses. Um, so if you are willing to take only online courses from them, then uh, we have to work on the, you know, uh, course selection. But by most of the uh, bioinformatics courses, like listed on our website, they are in person. And sorry, one more question. I see a hand raised Hello. for Dinko. 
Dinko? Yes. And ask your question. Yes. I, I, I actually, I, I applied for uh, the 2022 uh, fall season, fall academic year. But I, since then, I haven't gotten any message from, from you. Okay, I can answer that. This is something that we do every semester. The graduate school will open up the applications for the next semester. However, we do not begin the review cycle until the current semester has began classes. And so we just started our review cycle last week. Therefore, we are going through the applications in order that they are received. So we have just begun the review cycle. So we ask for your patience as we'll begin getting all of those different letters and communications I'm, out. So that's wow. the answer I'm, for I'm, that. I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. Oh, you're more than welcome. And that's that's honestly a great and um, question that we get yeah. all the time. Again, we're not a rolling yeah. admission school, so we do wait for the current semester before we can start doing new semesters. So we we appreciate okay. all of you who apply four and five months, okay. ago, but we won't start looking at it until we get the current students in. Okay. Okay. I'm all grateful. Right. Thank you, thank you course, very much. Thank you. And of again, course, a follow up yeah. question. A, a follow up question. Okay. Um, yes, uh, Egan. If I sh if the name is being mentioned well, if I mention the name, <laughs> Egan, he he made mention that you can uh, have an elective. Um, combining the data science to an elective, where he was mentioning economics and uh, and other uh, um, stuff. But my background is in uh, accounting, so I don't know what, how about that. Is that is it also part of the electives? Uh, like we don't have a accounting department at UMBC, so this is why like, we don't have a, a agreement with them. But I know there okay. are a couple of uh, faculty members at the in the econometrics department. Actually, they are doing accounting. So yes, uh, if you join it, us, like, you should okay. talk to their GPD, uh, Dr. Bremen. Uh, and then they yeah. will, he will definitely help you with selecting courses from their back uh, from their school. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, well, I'm 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 okay with that economics because my program was business administration in economics and accounting, but I just majored in accounting. So uh, in either way, I'm okay. Yeah, I guess like I I don't know their admission conditions like so. Uh, I cannot talk for for for, for, for them, but uh, uh, like if you have a specific question regarding a specific class, then we need we need to make sure that you meet the uh, prereqs. Like for example, I don't know. I'm just making it up. So if you have taken okay. a class on microeconomics, maybe you can take their econ six or one. So I'm just making it up. But again, there are some sort okay. of rules. Yeah. I'm I'm grateful for that advice. I'm grateful. No problem. All right, thank you, Dinko. We've got quite a bit of hands raised. This is excellent. So I'm going to go old school and do it classroom style, and I'm just going to call on people. And um, um, Dr. Simsek, if you'll chime in after their question, whether it's for me or Dr. Simsek. All right, Sophia Shaw, you have a question? Um, it's more of a clarification question on the application. So you said that we need a statement of purpose and a resume and our transcripts and whatnot. When we're applying, there's also spaces for a cover letter and a personal statement. And I just want to know, is it just one person uh, statement of purpose or should we fill those out too? Excellent question. The goal statement slash the personal statement are one and the same. So even though there's two areas, you only need to do one. The cover letter is not required. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. All right, let's go next to, please forgive me. I don't think I'm going to pronounce this correctly. Oyuku. Hello, good evening. This is me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for calling me. So, and I have a question that, um, so, and I'm in accounting background, and then I just want to know that correlation between accounting and data science, you know, I don't have any, like, background on data science, so I'm interested in a field, but uh, those who have accounting background, is it going to be the good foundation to start as a, start studying data science? To be honest with you, I don't know what they teach in accounting. <laughs> okay, that's my problem. Maybe I should I should learn. And since like we don't have accounting program here, I never get to learn about them. Mm -hmm. uh, but here's the basic thing. So, and you should, should don't forget that like our program, as, as I told you before, 
So it is technical and we do programming. So if you don't like programming, then at least our program is not your cup of tea because there are some programs like they call themselves uh, business analytics. So in business analytics programs, they don't do programming. What they do is they use prepared uh, software packages which can do machine learning for you. Um, so my understanding is most of most of the people coming from economics, accounting, um, some other financial backgrounds, they go to that field, okay, business analytics. Uh, but our field is more uh, is a little bit more technical, so we require um, you know, programming. So my recommendation to you would be like trying Python programming right now, trying to learn it right now. If you like it, beautiful. If you don't like it, then uh, then, then you, you can say that there's not much correlation between data science and accounting in your case. Um, but I have to tell you also, we have one professor, uh, Abdullah Karasan, and he has a PhD on data science for finance. He has a book on the subject, and he's teaching you know, financial data science every fall and spring. This semester, actually, he's teaching two sections of it because we have so many students they are interested in joining the financial sector and doing data science. So Capital One, uh, T T Row Price or something like that, Goldman Sachs, those companies are hiring our students like you know crazy, right? And they're all doing financial business. So finance, you know, there's a huge demand. And I, I, to me, like since you already know the, uh, the financial part, accounting part, if you can build data science on top of it, it will be just so beautiful. So again. If you want, if if pro, if you don't have much Python uh, Python programming experience, you better start from today tonight. Thank you so much. And then You're I welcome. live in a Northern Virginia. Just this is my last question. And then I live in a North Northern Virginia side. And then I'm not sure I'm gonna be considered as a local student, domestic student, or out of state. Or I'm just wondering in that. So active. Okay, maybe uh, Stephanie can give you a much precise answer, but my recommendation to you would be applying to our Shady Grove program. Ah, uh, okay. So she, Stephanie, does Northern Virginia students accepted as, uh, is, 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 are they accepted as local students or no? We cannot hear you. You are muted. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> I was just talking too, yes. <laughs> There are actual areas of Virginia that are included in our Maryland. It's called our Maryland Regional Tuition, and that's on our website. So there are, it is listed. There are places in Pennsylvania as well. So Pennsylvania, New York, and Virginia, there are some areas that you would be New York? Maryland resident. There's a small part. It's a small part. Wow. Maybe the bordering parts. I have no idea. That was, it's it's not under our program purview, so <laughs> I don't know how they went about it, but there, but those, those are some of those. So that is on our website. It's in the, it's on the graduate school's website under tuition, and you'll be able to see the actual states listed. Um, I would look it up for you for a minute, but I want to make sure that I get some of these other questions. If I get a chance, I'll look it up and put it in the chat box. So you go, okay? Thank you so much. Of Thank course. You. All right, let's go to Andre Edward. Oh, good evening from Nigeria. Good evening. Um, I just have one first question I want to ask is in the area of um, English test call, does it have to affect people who actually did their study program in English language and also people who have actually run some courses in English language? Do we still need to submit the test call? Uh, so, if you're an international student, if you're an international applicant, uh, you are expected to submit an ELC score, right? But there are a few um, a few exceptions. So, one of them is, I believe, if you lived in the United States for more than two years, um, then you can say, hey, I'm asking for a, a like waiver to the graduate school. That's do doable. Because what, what I'm saying is, Back in Nigeria, our, our, we're talking Oh, you are from Nigeria? Yes. Yeah, we don't require, uh, Stephen, I'm right, right? We don't require ELC from, for people from Nigeria, right? Exactly. I put that in the chat, but Nigeria is one of the countries that is waived from ELC requirements. Yeah. Okay. You are good to go. 
And just right. um, anyone else that may have a question on that, on the international admission site, they have an actual Word document that lists all of the countries that have automatically waivers of ELC. So that's on the international webs, um, international link under the UMBC, and you'll see all of the countries that get a waiver from the English language proficiency test requirement. Okay, thank you. I have one more question to ask. Um, in the area of transcript, I know we need to do our evaluation. Mostly people like us that study from outside the country, like in Nigeria and other countries. And my question is that I already had an evaluation by West. I don't know if an, um, an unofficial transcript sent in preparation for admission, then after then I could order for my official transcript from West. Yeah, you can submit the unofficial one. If you get admitted, then you are supposed to bring us the original document in your first semester. Sure. But for the, okay, review, thank you. For, the for the decision, you don't need to have the official one. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Andre. Okay, let's go next to Harsha. Yeah, hi, Stephanie. Hello. Yeah, yeah this is more related to application site. So, like, I have applied the application. So, um, I have uh, requested my process for the recommendations. So, I have asked three of them, but unfortunately, one of them is on uh, vacation, so he couldn't be able to submit that one. So, does uh, two letters of recommendations enough for the application that's process? A, that's think? actually all that we require. UMBC, our graduate data science program, we only require two recommendations. So, that would be fine. Just please ensure that they're on letterhead and that they're actually signed by your recommender. Sure. Thank you. Thanks, Tiffany. Oh, you're Have very welcome. You as well. Let's go to Sangeeta. Sangeeta, please forgive me if I mispronounce. Sangeeta, I believe. Sangeeta. I, uh, that's my guess. Okay. Uh, it's Sangeeta. <laughs> awesome. So my question is, uh, so when applying for your application, you figure out that uh, you need a stats class, right? So do you have to like complete your stats course like before you apply or like you can do it alone? Look, uh, we have actually so many students, especially the ones who have a background in non-technical fields or technical field, but like, for example, mechanical engineering, right? They don't have a, they don't have a class on statistics or civil engineering. So my recommendation to you would be start taking an online class right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, because like in you know, actually statistical learning is very big part of our business and we rely on statistical concepts heavily. Like, so you need to make sure that you have those fundamental understanding because like, because without that, you won't be able to become a, like a successful uh, machine learning or like data scientist, right? Um, so, if I were you, I would do this. I would join one of those free online courses. And in my application, the same no purpose, I would mention that. Like, like, I didn't take a course on statistics, but I am willing to learn before I join. Uh, so you can definitely do that. But there's another option. The other option is we have this course called Statistical Analysis and Visualization with Python. So that course is created for absolute beginners, okay? absolute beginners, meaning that you don't have to do any Python programming in your life. Mm -hmm. So in the first four or five weeks, maybe five, six weeks, we will just learn the basics of Python. Like this is where you download it. This is how, how you install it. So these are the variables. This is how you write if statements. Oh, by the way, you know, this is what you do, right? Like data structure just a bit. Mm -hmm. But in the remaining nine weeks, we will be covering the fundamental statistical subjects. But our, our, our course is trying to like it is designed to teach you uh, statistics with python okay so it's not like a statistic class if you go to the statistics department they have their own statistics class okay and they just teach statistics in our case we want you to um obtain those statistical uh like for example z score t score right how you can obtain them with python right then also how, it, how, how can you visualize those results okay so the purpose is not teaching you the statistics, but basically it's doing statistics, st statistical analysis with Python and then with visualization. So during that class, we also provide lots of like, like class materials covering the, the, the theoretical part. So that's also a good option. Um, but if you if you are a, if you are 
familiar with Python programming right now, then the first five, six weeks will be just a waste of time for you, then, then I would recommend it, okay? So it's okay. a complicated story. Got it. So, okay, if you are like just uh, like having an online course right now, um, say that's like, fine. Okay, all right. Yeah, just mention in your SOP. All right. One more question. Yeah. So, when doing the evaluation uh, from WES, I had my GPA to be like 2.95, right? But when applying at UMBC, uh, they just give you like one decimal point afterwards. So, the 2.95, would it technically be 3.0? Don't worry about. It, don't worry. Like we don't care about the, the like those, that those conversions. So we we look at the transcripts one by one. So there are a couple of things we are very careful about, like, like your fundamental, like your grades in your fundamental classes. So what did you do, like overall? So did you take some courses on like you know data science or like programming towards the end of your education? But there are so many other things we we look at. Uh, so we try to find really the best candidates uh, for our program. Right. I, I have to tell you, we are a little bit too much selective now. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Welcome. All right, let's go next to Derek. Hi again. Um, I had a couple questions. So, uh, for the recommendation letter, um, is that for just all students or is international students? This quick one. So it is for international students, and don't get that wrong. Like we are not racist, but. There are some schools that we don't know about now. We don't know about them. So those reference letters really so helpful understanding what kind of you know education they they took. What is their those candidates' strengths? So this is why we require citizenship uh, 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 recommendation letters only for uh, international students. For domestic students, we don't require that because require anything because we, we we know those schools, all those you know rankings or based on our experience, we know right. that. And another question, um, my background is in biology. Um, I, ha I have some programming experience, but it's not um, traditional. It's like, you know, um, Code Academy, some Coursera stuff, but, you know, and, but I have research experience um, and like, you know, a, a paper that should be coming out soon. Would that, would that be okay for that? Yeah, yeah. congratulations. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great, great experience. And we have so many successful people, like the people with so many successful stories. They join us with a biology degree. And in the beginning, like they were like, I don't know what to do with my degree. And now they are working like companies like uh, pharmaceutical pharmaceutical companies because they really like to hire people who knows about biology, chemistry, and data science. They work for NIH or NIH contractors. Um, and anybody doing bioinformatics, or, you know, like again, they, they they like people with a background in biology. So you, you will be a hot shot as long as you keep your GPA high. Okay. And so um, I have two GPAs. I have a undergrad in biology, and that's like a three point two. Good. Is, is that good? And then I have like a master's in something non-traditional, music performance. So it's like a, I didn't finish the program, um, but it's like a three point six. Is that a, is that a, does that work? Yeah, but I, probably we will not look look at your uh, uh, music program. Okay, perfect. Because those courses are not relevant to our program. Even right. though we have a couple of students, they were very interested in music. And they did their capstone projects on music uh, subjects. For example, one of them, um, uh, he actually, so one of them used transformers. That algorithm creates music for you. Okay, so you just mentioned a couple of words, then it creates an, uh, it creates music for you. Oh, wow. Um, the other one, uh, the other one actually did a even more complicated project. Um, and now he works at Boss. Uh, you know, oh. was, they had, uh, so they are, yes. they are trying to detect the, the mechanical problems in the car through the microphones built on the, actually the speakers built on the, on the cars. And wow. the customer is uh, Audi. So he's doing really well. Wow. Awesome. Yep. Thank you, Derek. Thank All you. right. We've got time for about, I see, um, excuse me, four more questions. So we're going to take those. And so let's go with Param. Hi. Hello. Uh, my question is that my GPA is on the scale of 10. So do I need to submit the WES evaluation? Is it mandatory? Uh, like, I, I don't pay attention to those WES uh, uh, because I now, now I am an expert on analyzing Indian transcripts. Uh, I have like a, almost like a PhD, so no problem. Okay. You can just send it as is. 
Okay, and uh, one more thing is that uh, I don't have my transcripts as I'm studying right now. So is my mark sheets all right for the decision? So and, uh, you are yes. applying for the spring and you will be graduating at the end of this semester? No, no, no. Fall, fall, fall 23. And currently I am in my seventh semester. So you will be joining us in fall? Yes. Okay, that's the plan. Um, yeah, then uh, then we will be reviewing your application probably in the you know, spring semester. So, so my recommendation to you would be uh, just enter to the system and upload your most recent uh, transcript somewhere in like uh, late January. Okay. Okay. Then you will have your spring uh, fall uh, twenty two grades. Can I upload my mark sheets instead of my transcripts? I don't know that much. Uh, can Can he, Stephanie? We We need your transcripts. We can do a, an official in terms of for um, review, but it has to be transcripts from your university. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. All right. We'll go with Kashik. Kashik. Yeah, hi, Stephanie. Hi, uh, Professor Simsek. Yeah, so firstly, thanks for this session. It has been uh, really informative and yeah, helpful. You're welcome. That's our yeah, job. Yeah, <laughs> my question is on the <laughs> internship. So uh, can we take this uh, data 696 in spring or fall semester and do a full-time internship? Okay, so look, actually, that's a really good question and we forgot to mention that. So the, there is one catch with spring intakes and the catch is the following so the rule uh these are requirements right they require the regulations require two full semesters here in order to get your cpt and to work off campus right for on campus job there's no problem but for off campus job you have to finish two full semesters spring and fu uh, fall they are the two full semesters so what what happens is, so if you start in spring, the earliest time you can uh, start as a, you can have an internship will be January 2024, okay, because of the rules. Um, for the fall intake, th there's no such problem because they start in you know, late August, they finish in May, so they have 18 credits and then they can work as an intern in the summer. Uh, if you are if, if if having an internship is one of your num like very important goals, then then you should I think join us uh, in the fall semester. Yeah, actually, yeah, we also forgot that. Yeah, okay, the two things. So so um, so if you get admitted, you can defer your admission to fall. Uh, it won't be a problem. And I would recommend it to international candidates very heavily, just because of the following reason, right? And the following reason is, um, right now we have a you know, very big program. The data science program is very big. Also, the other like CS program is very big, and the number of students has increased dramatically in the last year. And found, 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 finding an apartment very close to the campus could be a problem. So, of course, like if you go ten miles far, there's no problem. But in that case, you will need to have a car, right? Um, and coming here in late august and coming here in late january there are two different things because in august the weather is beautiful um you know even though you have to spend the first your first day at the airport there's no problem you can you know eat drink etc etc but if you come here at the end of january and if there's like a you know snowstorm and if you don't have that housing then that will be a big problem for you that will be a big problem for us so for international students, my recommendation would be like two recommendations. Number one, play safe, defer admission to fall. Or if and, and you know, this will help with finding the you know housing and also starting your internship right on the track, right? In, in summer 2024. Uh 2023, sorry. Um 24, yeah, that's correct. Um the other thing is uh other thing is if you are, if you want to join us in spring, that's fine. But you should do your homework really well. Meaning that talk to other students, try to you know find you know, your future you know, housemates, 
then uh, even before coming here, you, you can talk to companies, you can talk to our current students, and you can learn about where they live, where you can find like a reasonable price housing. So housing is very, very key issue. Okay. Um, and I know there's like a WhatsApp group. Uh, maybe you, you, you're you already a member of that group. So if you get admitted, please uh, you know, talk to each other and uh, plan accordingly. And I, by the way, I forgot the original question. What was the question? <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, the the question was, uh, can we take uh, internship subject in the spring? Okay, thank you. Now I remember. So, we just created those two independent study courses, and, and they just started right now. And the idea is the following: right, we, right now, we have three students this semester. They are this is their final semester, and they have full time jobs. Okay, they have they are working forty hours a week as a data scientist already. So they are taking capstone project. And they didn't want to take another class because they, they, they already have this job and they are so busy. So right now, what we are doing is we, you know, they are taking this data 696. So meaning that their internship experience will be accepted as a graduate class. Okay. So we just want them send us the one page uh, summary at the end of the semester, explaining what they did in that company. Okay. But that's it. Um, so that's really something you should consider and you should also ask your employer to pay for the you know uh, course fees because they can get that money back through the you know, tax system very easily so you can yes definitely do 696 and the other thing is like data 699 we just started that one and that one is for the students who wants to go to like a phd after our program and normally we recommend students to do uh, CS, like MS in CS, if they're interested in uh, PhD. But we had a couple of students, they joined us, and after joining us, they really enjoyed like, programming, data science, etc. cetera. Um, so for those students, we created this 699, so they will be doing research uh, with our faculty members, then they can you know, hopefully publish papers, then they can uh, increase their chance of getting admitted to a PhD program. All right, thanks, uh, You're welcome, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. All right, we have time for two more. I do want to make sure I've seen a couple in the chat box and I've been trying to answer those as well. Please remember that within one to two weeks, so between one and two weeks, our marketing department will be sending a copy of the video recording and PowerPoint slides to each of you. So you will be able to receive this information. Also, in order to have the application fee waived, you will put DPS 2023 on that site. I've put that in the chat box for you to know. So the waiver code is there. Please remember in terms of the application um, deadlines, excuse me, for this coming spring, our international applicants, you have until October 1. So you have about two and a half to three more weeks for the spring semester. For our domestic applications, you have until December 1st. So again, international, October 1, domestic, December 1, okay? Um, any question that's not answered tonight, as we said, please feel free to contact me and or Dr. Simsek, and we will respond to you. All right, for our last two questions, Diraj, again, please forgive me if I said that incorrectly. Diraj? No problem. Uh, hello, Stephanie and Simsek. So I just have a question. So do we have any f uh, flexibility to uh, complete our course in one and a half years? You know, that, that is 30 credits, right? So do we have any uh, possibility to finish uh, our course within one and a half year? There's a possibility of finishing our program even in 12 months. Uh, like this happened, you know, you need to take three, three, four. Uh, to finish in like or four three three uh to finish in 12 months or if you want to finish in like 15 months that's also possible we also offer some courses in the summer yeah, that's definitely possible so like that one, one of our students uh he called me um uh, it was like late may and he was like uh hey dr simsek like, i have to graduate at the end of august i was like okay so what's the problem he said like i have so far like seven courses uh, sorry six courses so can i take four courses in the summer I said, yeah, you can take it, but what is the rush? And he said, oh, I, I, I'm, I have an offer from Amazon, but I have to start in September. I said, okay, then start. And he did. Uh, thank, thanks, Simsek. Uh, that Good was up. clear.
All right, and last but not least, your Donos. Uh, I joined a little bit late. Uh, you probably answered it. Uh, is the classes offered online or is it in person? Yeah, like some of them are online. So our policy is we are trying to, actually, it's not right. We are teaching at least one online section of all the core data science courses. So data 601 to data 606, all of them, at least we have one online sections. But if you look at our current, uh, like for example, four uh, fall program, you will see that there are 30, 30, like 30, 30 online sections. Um, like some of them, uh, because like our faculty members, like they, 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 they want to teach online. So like, uh, like Shin Shue, uh, he works at Google. He lives in San Francisco, right? So he, he has to teach online. Um, and some courses, like for example, like data 605, half of the sections are all online, like data ethics class. Uh, one of our instructors, actually, she lives in Switzerland. Um, she works, she works for Google as well. So yeah, we have so many online courses. So if you want, you can finish our program totally online, like all the data courses, you can take them online. Uh, engineering management class, you know, it's one of the required classes. They have also a few online sections. Uh, but if you cannot get into that class, then we can help you with finding an, another online class, then we can, uh, that which, which can be accepted as an equivalent of that class. Okay. So there are like solutions, yeah. Thank you so much. But I would recommend, especially for courses like data 601, data 602, data 603, 604, like those four courses, I would recommend taking them in person. Mm -hmm. okay. well, at least like half of them, yeah. All right. All right, it is 7.16. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us, for listening to us, for asking questions. Um, again, like we are here to help you. So let me okay, email address of Stephanie. So, Stephanie, can you share your email address? Data science hyphen MPS, right? Something like that. Right, correct. <laughs> correct. I am trying to pull it up quickly on our website so I can just copy and paste it really quick. But yeah. I'm saying this as uh, Dr. Simsek has said, I am your contact for anything as you have for admission and application questions. I am now putting that email address in the chat box. So that is where you can send it. Please note that when I said I, I also have a team of two additional workers, Gretchen and Christina. So between the three of us, we will be able to assist you with any of your admission and application questions. Um, yeah, this has been a great one. Again, congratulations to Jaiwan Choi for being our raffle winner. And thank you all for attending. Uh, it, Dr. Simsek, if you have any other parting remarks, we'll get ready to adjourn. Oh, uh, just my remarks very simple. S start studying tonight. That's very easy. Then uh, we will be successful. Okay. Again, thank you so much. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye-bye.